Hey, welcome to Structure Fishing. I'm Jim Shell. Today's video, I'm going to be talking about perch in Lake Michigan uh, in the Chicagoland area. Uh, if you're new to the channel, uh, I follow the teachings of Buck Perry, who is known as the father of modern day fishing. He's the one that coined the term structure breaks and break lines. First one to talk about weather and water. Uh, you want to find out more about Buck Perry, check out other videos on the channel here. But most of my videos I put on my channel here are educational, how-to, instructional, uh, informational kind of videos. And that's what I'll do today about the perch. Uh, Casey and I have been fishing perch. This is our sixth season fishing it. So, you know, uh, there's a lot of guys out there that have been fishing perch in Chicago for, you know, 20, 30 years plus. Uh, we've only got six years under our belt, but I like to show you uh what we've learned or you know the patterns and the techniques we use um so let's just talk about the you know you can obviously fish from shore or from boat uh most of my uh information i'm going to give you is talking about the boat but i'm going to quickly go over to shore um uh, the two most popular places to fish from shore is navy pier and when you're fishing from navy pier uh, you're only allowed to fish the north side of Navy Pier. Um, I think you can fish from here, this side here, all the way to, I believe, right here you're allowed to fish. You cannot fish on the south side of Navy Pier. It's uh, not allowed. You know, all the tourists um, and the uh, pleasure boat, uh, not pleasure boats, but the sightseeing boats all dock here on the uh, south side, and uh, it's closed to fishing from uh, shore or from the pier. But on the north side of the pier, you're allowed to fish here. Um, and also, while we're talking about that, it wasn't up until last year that you can uh, fish in this north side of the slip here, at the pier. Um, it was closed to boat traffic. Uh, someone had, I don't recall the specific details, but someone had challenged that last year, saying that, you know, the city of Chicago would kick you out of there, but someone challenged it and found out that uh, the city was wrong. Uh, uh, they cannot kick you out of there. So since last year, uh, you can come in here by boat and fish. Uh, prior to last year, uh, you'd get kicked out if you tried doing it. So so that's uh, another uh, opportunity for uh, boat fishermen to get on the north side of the slip there. And it's very good. Uh, while we're talking about Navy Pier, our, our guess, uh, first segment here will be from the shore. You can park... Um, they have a special, everyone asks about parking. Uh, the, all the garage entrances are on this north side of the pier. And if they have a special for fishermen, uh, if you enter uh, 5 a.m. and if you leave by 10 a.m., it will cost you $9 to park, which is a great deal. Uh, what you have to do is before you leave, and you have to leave before 10 a.m., I would probably say probably 9.45, you've got to go to the uh, parking lot garage, which is somewhere on the east side, right around here, approximately, you got to look for it, and you got to go there. You have to. They will ask you for your fishing license. They jot down the your license number, and then they uh, give you a new ticket. And when you exit the garage, uh, it will only cost you nine dollars to park. And if you don't uh, have that ticket, it is expensive to park down there. Look at this right here. Someone just posted this uh, today. Uh, if you stay, look at it, for an hour, 18 bucks. If you stay for just over an hour, it's $32 to park. Two to five hours, 37 If you're there for five hours or more, you're paying $45 to park. Now, just, I, I'm going to talk about the boat launches in a second here, but the boat launches in all of the city of Chicago harbors that have boat ramps, it's all the same price. It's $28. Now, initially, you might think, wow, $20 is a lot, but... Uh, you're there all day for 28 bucks uh, launching a boat. It's cheaper to launch a boat than it is to park at the pier. That's crazy, but uh, anyway. So uh, the most two most popular spots of shore fish are Navy Pier here, and the other is the 87th Street Boat Slip, which is right here. It's called uh, the Steel, uh, Steel Workers Park here in the slip here. Now... And this is a very popular spot. And this is probably the most consistent spot for shoreline anglers to get perched. The only thing about this, this is private property. It's owned by the, uh, uh, what is it, USS Steel. Um, and 
they can. You are trespassing if you fish here, and every now and then, occasionally, you will. They will send security guards out there and kick people out. Um, for the last few years, um, they really were light. They, uh, it was rare to get kicked out of there. Maybe towards the end of the season, in in the early spring, uh, they were kicking people out. Uh, but uh, for the most part, you didn't have much trouble. But uh, this particular year, in uh, 2023, um, there's been reports that uh, they're actively getting security down there, chasing people out of there. So it can be hit or miss if you're fishing here. Uh, but this is, is a popular spot to fish for a couple of reasons. Number one, it, it's good. It's very productive spot to fish. And number two, uh, parking is free. You can park, uh, you, usually you can park right on the shoulder here of Lakeshore Drive. And you can also park in the, uh, right here. You come over here and there's a, a parking lot at the steel markers. If you park over here, you're obviously going to have a pretty hefty walk. Or not a hefty walk, but you know maybe a 10 minute walk to get over here. Uh, but all the shore fishing is usually done, well, really, this entire slip, you'll see people. When the perch bite is really good, you'll have you'll have hundreds of people all over this slip. Um, but it is private property, and technically you're trespassing. Uh, the only legal way to really fish this slip is by boat. And you can uh, launch, uh, you know, I've never launched in a Calumet River right here, but I'm told there's a launch here. And there's also a launch, uh, City of Chicago launch, 95th Street. Where is it? It's right here. Years ago, I launched out of here, but uh, it's going to be 28 bucks no matter where you launch in the City of Chicago. Uh, but you got a boat ramp here. You can come out and you can just scoot up over here and get into the slip. Or you can get into the Calumet River as well. Now, I have not fished the Calumet River, but I see tons of reports on social media that uh, the uh, boats in here... Uh, catch perch consistently uh, all fall and, and, and through the winter. Uh, and I believe they catch them consistently th really throughout this whole entire river. Um, but, and there are, there is quite a bit of perch fishing that is done in the Indiana waters. Casey and I last year uh, in early March made a trip out here. Um, there's a flat, and I, I, I'm a little bit dumbfounded to tell you the truth, what the attraction is to the perch but there's a flat out here it's about three three and a half miles offshore and it is just loaded with perch it's deep you're catching these fish if i'm not mistaken it was about 45 50 feet of water and you're catching fish that deep and you're pulling them up they're gonna the pressure change the depth of water pulling up they're gonna be dead so once you catch 15 15 fish regardless of size you're done but most of those fish that you catch are gonna be really nice fish uh, it's a shame that people go out there and they release these smaller fish and they're just floating up dead. Um, but uh, if you do go out there and get these fish out of really deep water, you know, you, once you get the, your limit, and once again, the limit of fish in Indiana and Illinois waters is 15 per person. But anyway, so let me start talking about the... Uh, uh, well, let me go through the other launches, and I'll talk about our presentation and the equipment we use to catch these perch. Uh, so you got a launch at 95th Street. The other launch is now, most of my fishing is in the Navy Pier area, and I've used three boat ramps. I use this one right here, which is uh, 31st Street Harbor. Um, where is the boat ramp? Right here. Yeah, here's the boat ramp. Um, I've used this ramp, and uh, it's... Even though it's a little further than Burnham Harbor, it's about the same drive because when you launch over here, you have a very short no wake, and then you're right at the uh, mouth here, and then it's a little boat, not much of a boat ride to get right over here to Navy Pier. Uh, and here is Burnham Harbor. Oops. Right over here, there's the launch right there. You got three ramps here. Uh, you enter... After you launch, launching is actually free. You're paying for the parking. Uh, but after you launch, you come over here, and then uh, it's a credit card. Uh, you need to get inside here. Uh, it's uh, $28. Once again, all the ramps in Chicago are 28 bucks, And then you uh, park in a lot here. Um, and Burnham Harbor is also a good perch 
uh, place to fish too. You can get uh, at times you can get schools of perch, pods of perch coming in here too. Um, I have we really haven't spent a lot of time fishing for perch in Burnham Harbor, but we Casey and I did once and uh, we were catching a few. Um, but I, I want to see if I can target perch more often in this harbor here. Uh, but what I hear this is a pretty good uh, bite as well too. Well, typically we launch out of here and then we make the short boat ride over to uh, the Navy Pier area here. Uh, let's just go through the last boat launch that I use. And that is the one right here. Um, I don't even know what they call this boat ramp. Diversity Har this is Diversity Harbor, so I guess it's a Diversity Harbor. And it's the same setup. You got to pay, uh, they got a little uh, uh, automatic machine in there with a credit card, 28 bucks to get in here, launch your boat. Then you go out through here, you go underneath the bridge, and then you go out. And it's about the same boat ride if you launch from Diversity Harbor to get to uh, Navy Pier, or if you're launching at Burnham or even 31st Street to get to Navy Pier. And when we're at Navy Pier, uh, most of our fishing is uh, the north side of Navy Pier is uh, hands down the best. You're going to find uh, uh, huge schools of fish out here. Uh, that's why the shore fishermen do really good. And it, like I say, this is only the second year that it's been open to boats. And uh, it's, it's just, there's a lot of perch for everybody <laughs> in this north side here. You will occasionally get some on the south side here. It's hit or miss. Um, but when they are here, they're, it, it can be very good fishing. Uh, but it's much more consistent on the north side. Um, I'm only going to be talking about perch. But um, we do a lot of lake trout fishing uh, in the late fall and very, very early spring, right after ice out. We fish around the Chicago Lighthouse. Uh, you can catch Lakers here jigging or trolling, but uh, maybe I'll do a separate video on lake trout fishing here. But uh, again, back to the perch. All right, so we've got a, a, a few spots as to where we catch the perch. Now it just comes down to uh, presentation, what we're using to, to catch them out there. Um, okay, and there's, I, we're typically using a, a crappie rig. Um, let me find it here. Uh, uh, your traditional crappie rigs, that's what uh, uh, I, I've been using up until this year, actually. You know, th these are nice because you can pick them up pretty much. Any, I, I believe almost every Walmart you go to, you're going to find you're going to find this crappie rig by Eagle Call in here. They work, work great. Um, I don't have a really good picture, the picture of how the, this crappie rig looks uh, on hook. But you got the metal arms here. comes out. you got a hook. Uh, you tie it to your line, and then at the snap here, you put a little weight. You can see, like, over here. And for the most part, yeah, I would probably say about a 3 8 ounce weight is what you want to use. Unless you're fishing deeper than, uh, you know, 25, 30 feet, then you probably want to go with a heavier weight. Uh, but what I went out and got this year was something called uh, perch pounders. Yeah, perch pounder, too. <laughs> You'll see me using this in, in, in the video. I uh I actually would use it today for the first time, and uh, it's very similar to this crappie rig here. Um, it works really good. I don't, they put this little, it's sort of like a little piece of nylon paper or something here, just a, like a little skirt, just to give a little bit more flash in the water. But you're tipping this with a minnow, minnow as well, or a night crawler. You know, a lot of people are really hooked about using minnows, uh, but if you don't have access to minnows or it's hard to get for you, um, I've had the same success putting a night crawler on these rigs, just the same as minnows. I think even in the video, you'll see me throwing on a, uh, a night crawler and catching them as well, too. Matter of fact, uh, my daughter Emily, in the video you'll see here, she she caught a 14 and a quarter inch perch and it came on a night crawler. So um, don't be uh, concerned about that. You can only catch these things on minnows. You can catch them on night crawlers, too. Um, a lot of people on the internet talk about using shrimp. They like cook shrimp. I don't think it really matters. You can, uh, but a lot of people swear by that. But you know, I think the important thing is you got to have a little piece of meat on there. So we're either using these crappie rigs, which is, uh, once again, this little crappie rig or this thing called the perch pounder, or if you're using a single rig. Oh, oh there's a close up of the crappie rig there. Um, the other thing we use a lot are these little cast master spoons these eighth ounce cast masters and uh the important thing is here you have to tip it with a little piece of meat uh casey a lot of times will just uh 
pinch off the head of a minnow and just put the minnow head on there, or I'll just put a tiny little piece of a night crawler on there. Um, but it it helps greatly. You have to put it, a little piece of meat on there. But that's what we're using now. The important technique about this, you know, crappies just like any, I mean, perch are just like any other fish. They, uh, you know, sometimes they're active and sometimes they're very dormant, in inactive. Well, let me back up and talk about these. Uh, the, these perch roam in, in, in these big schools or pods. And you can have several of them. And they're always moving. You might catch, you might find a big pod of perch here one day. And the next day you come out, they're over here. Or they're over here. They're always moving. Matter of fact, when we do find a pod of perch and we're on them, it's quite common that you'll catch two, three, or four, and then they're gone. And then you basically you have to move the boat 15, 20, 30 feet over, and you're back on them again. Uh, so it's very common that you're out there that you're always following this pod that you're working. Uh, but these perch always seem to be on the move. That, that's the key. Uh, once again, you always have to, you know, if you find the find a big pot of perch over here uh and, and you come out a week later um you know granted you're, you're going to look at that same area again but I, I four out of five times these perch are going to move and and you might find them here you might find them here you might find them you know over here uh, so don't be afraid if you're not catching fish or you're not marking them to look for the perch because they're always on the move but when you do find them then you got to narrow down that presentation you got you got to tone in on on what's going to get these fish to hit and most of the time these perch are inactive and you know uh if they're active you can throw it out there and you'll see that rod tip you know you get a perch you'll see the rod tip just like you know you're used to seeing the tip going but there's so many times out there that these fish hit so light you can't the rod tip doesn't even tap like that you can't even see it i would probably say four out of five or four out of five trips so I go out there, these perch hit so light that you have to hold the rod in your hand and you just feel the slightest bit of resistance. You don't even feel a tap. You don't, can't even see the tap. You just hold it and you feel the slightest bit of resistance and I pull up and four out of five times, it's a perch. You, you, you'll see it in the video. I'll have a, 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 at the end over here. But, uh, you know, and sometimes they want a little speed to it. Uh, Quick uh, story on that is last year when Casey and I went in, uh, out of Indiana and fished the uh, you know that that deeper mud flat that these perch uh, pile in on, and um, there I, I was surprised a ton of boats. Well, I counted sixty boats out there, but anyway, I would I only see a, a boat occasionally catch a perch here or there, and we were catching one here or there. And then all of a sudden Casey gets one, he gets two, he gets three four five after at least the fifth or sixth one in a row i'm like what are you doing what's going on here and he said dad you have to cast it out and drag it on the bottom that was one of the rare trips you always got to experiment you know and see what the fish want but that on that particular trip we we're we were fishing dead stick and straight down deep they weren't tapping it at all but you were casting it out and just dragging very slowly dragging the bait on the bottom and they were smacking it every time and once we i should say one once casey found found the pattern i think we limited out in gosh uh, uh less than an hour i think we were the first boat to leave the pack because you know, once again when you're catching fish that deep they're dead you got to keep them and once you get 15 you're done you gotta you gotta head out but uh but anyway getting back to it you always got to check what the fish want but most of the time, the perch here are very, very light tapping. Oh, another tip out here. You'll see it in the video, too. Uh, they hit so light, like, again, you cannot feel it. That's why I'm constantly, and you'll see in the, in, in the video, some of my clips, that I, I drop the weight to the bottom, and I just I'll keep it steady, and I'll just slowly pull, pull up. And if I feel the slightest bit of pressure or tension, you know, more than that weight on the bottom... I pull up, and, f and I'm telling you, four to five times, there's a fish on there. Another tip is uh, about two or three, no, actually four or five years ago, Casey bought his ice fishing rod out there. And at first I was like, come on, why do you want to waste your time with this ice fishing rod? But this was a trip that it was an extremely slow, light bite. 
and he put this ice fishing rod out there, and he's kept, he, he he probably outfished me five to one, if not six to one. I I I, I was astonished how that ice fishing rod was so sensitive. He was able to detect all of these fish hits. And um, when I went out this year with my daughter Emily, I took I grabbed Casey's ice fishing rod. I'm like, and this this year is the first time I tried his ice fishing rod. And it was a super light bite, so I thought, oh, I got his right right here. Let me try it. Let me see if it feels any different. It was an eye opener for me. I put that his little cast master down there, and that ice fishing rod is so light and so sensitive, you can feel the slightest little tap. It, I, I, I was pretty shocked by it. So that's another tip. There is use an ice fishing rod. Now you're not gonna be able to use one from shore. Well, you could use one from shore. But you have to, you know, fish. You're fishing pretty much vertically with a uh, uh, with that presentation. You're not be going to be casting out with a nice fishing rod. So if you can fish vertically along the wall here, that'd work out good. But if you're in a boat, uh, it may sound silly, but I guarantee you, bring a nice fishing rod and try it. So um, that's it. And, um, I guess to go over, you know, those are the two main places to, for, to uh, fish for perch: Navy Pier and 87th Street. But all these harbors have perch too, um, you know. And, but these schools of fish, these ponds of fish, they tend to, you know, come and go quite a bit. Where they tend to be more uh, consistent at the Navy Pier and the 87th Street Slip. But all these harbors you fish, that uh, Burnham Harbor, these harbors in here, Belmont Harbor, this harbor over here, this harbor. I mean, they all have uh, perch opportunities catching opportunities here so um that's it on uh on the uh chicago lakefront perch and uh you'll see some on the water footage of us uh of a couple of trips i've had here so um thanks for watching fish on first fish of the day there we go that's a nice keeper perch Open up the live well. We got got one for first perch. Let's go. Way to go, Ann. Yeah. Your first Lake Navy Pier perch. All right, man. He's a keeper. Open up the box. Just gonna put it down. I get hit. Give me hits. There we go. There we go. Casey's ice fishing rod. Hooked up on Casey's ice fishing rod. <laughs> He's right, it is sensitive. You might have to try this later, huh? Eh? Ooh, that's a nice one, too. Oh, wow. Sweet. Casey was killing him last year with this ice fishing rod because it's so sensitive when they hit really light like this. And yeah, I, you, you can actually feel the taps. That's a good tip from Casey. go. You can get him and my line's all tangled now. Looks like you got a good one there on there. Yeah, yeah, get him in. Nice. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one, Em. Sweet. You want to put him in the box or you want to open it up? Oh, Em's up. Hooked up again. Get him in. He looks like a nice one. <gasps> oh, M, you got the last two you got were a nice one, man. 15. Oh, look at that now. That's the 15th one in the box now. Awesome. This is a real good one. Sweet. Look at that fish. All right. Open the box. M's hooked up. M's hooked up. Live action here. Hang on. Live. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Am I hooked up to or that you have? Hang on, we got, Em's got one up. Get him in, get him in, get him in. Nice. Nice. Em just got one on the ice, another one on the ice fishing rod. 18. 18 in the box now. Way to go, Em. Oh no, oh my god. It's not a tank. Oh, 
Oh, it felt like a thing coming up. Are you having to catch up so you can back down again? Yes, ma'am, you're on them, man. We're kicking it, em. That's a nice perch, folks. All right, can you get the box for me? All right, we are wrapping up the day out here. What a day, M at the end of the day, got this 14 and a quarter beast over here. And she had a twin like that. She lost like 10, 15 minutes earlier. We lost it right at the boat. But we got another big one to make up for it. And we ended up the day catching our limit of perch out here. Look at all these perch here. 30 perch we've got. Nice. Was it fun today, Ann? Oh yeah, it was fun. You got probably more than half of them too. You, 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 you had a hot bite for a while there. And you got the biggest fish of the trip. Yeah. You can't beat that. All right, as Casey says, let's get some, let's get more. some more. All right, we're at Navy Pier, downtown Chicago. We are going to do some perch fishing. I, 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 the bite is on fire. I already pretty much got my limit in the live well, so I thought I would uh, just film and show you how great the action is out here. And you can see I'm fishing right off of the Navy Pier here in the North End. Looks like they've got some kind of a uh, marathon. Christmas marathon here. You see a lot of runners going by, but uh, fishing out here is just completely on fire. And uh, all I'm using is a crappie rig. I just bought this at that uh, park bait shop uh, in like Matros. It's uh, I think it's called a perch pounder, um, and it's working great for me. Just got a little weight on there, and uh, I'm going to drop it down. I mean, look at the screen here. I mean, there's there's fish everywhere now. I believe the fish that are suspended you see out there aren't active. In my opinion, the active fish are going to be on the bottom. So we're going to trap this rig to the bottom and uh, catch some perch here. Let's go. Here, going to drop down. And like I say, the active ones are going to be on the bottom. So as soon as I get it on the bottom, I'm just, I'm just going to pull up. I'm just going to have that weight. Oh, I just missed one. I'm gonna, just going to have that weight just off the bottom and just up oh, there we go feel the slightest little tap they're not hitting aggressive you got to really hold the rod and pay attention to that hit there you go it's a that's probably about a 10 and a half I'd, I'd say I'm mean, again all nice fish I mean I'm letting all these go because I already got I think I got 13 or 14 in the box I in case I get a jumbo I want to keep but all right I'm just using a little uh, just a little tiny fathead minnow let's put him back on drop back down again once again as soon as I hit the bottom I'm just gonna reel it off so that weight is just off the bottom all right I'm on the bottom Gonna reel it up a little bit. Oop. The key to this is hold. There we go. <laughs> it's holding the rod because they hit in so light. If I wasn't holding the rod, I wouldn't be able to detect a lot of these hits. So that's a little dink. What? A little dink. Uh, but the average size has been really exceptional right now. I mean, I'm. All the ones I've got in the box so far are uh, over 11 inches. They're probably uh, 11 and a half to 12 inches, a few over 12 inches, I mean, which are just, you know, great eater size. Get it back down on the bottom. As soon as that weight hits the bottom, I'm just lift it. Yeah. See, like I said, again, the key is you have to hold the rod because the bite is so light. You just feel, sometimes you don't even feel it. Sometimes I just see the tip just move very slightly and one's on. There we go. Bar uh, barely felt them on there. Oh, they're getting off. Let's see, as soon as I pull out the camera and start filming, I'm getting small ones. <laughs> but oh, he downed it. I'm going to have to get the pliers on this guy. And Ah, 
that. Just feel, feel that slightest resistance and pull up and there's a fish. There we go. Ooh, whoa. Whoa, this guy's a nicer one. Oh yeah, I sh should probably net this guy, but ooh. Oh yeah. Yeah, this, this guy is gonna go, uh, I think this guy is gonna be 13 inches all day long. Look at that, beautiful fish. Let's get some more. Throw him in the back. So can trap it, trap it to the bottom. Hit the bottom, crank up. I can't stress enough that they, they're hitting so light. You just, <laughs> I didn't even feel that. I just pulled up, I felt the slightest resistance and this is a good one. This, this, this is a, might be a jumbo. If I need a net for this guy or not. Oh yeah, he's going with the other one. Ugh. That's another. Look at that. This thing is probably, I would say close to 13 inches. But you, I'm going to toss that guy back. Wow. That's another nice one. Yeah, we're starting to get some really good ones in here now. Fought, fought harder, but that's a solid 12 inch fish. There's <laughs> another one. It's almost every drop. I'm picking one up. These are all 12, sometimes some of them are even 13s. This is, feels like a nicer one for sure. Oh, it's a double, that's why it feels so good. Double, look at that. There we go, another good one. I couldn't even tell you how many I, oh my God, it's a, that thing has got to be almost 13 again. Look at that. That is a nice perch. There we go. Throw him back. There we go. Hooked up again. You just got to get down there and wait about two, three seconds, and then you're going to get one that sucks it in. Yo, these are all good keeper size perch here. This guy's probably about 11 and a half, maybe. There we go. Just again, feeling that resistance, and the fish are on. perch well, it's like, I, I already have my limit so I'm just throwing these fish back now but this thing is this has got to be a 12 incher nice one I'm gonna put on a little nightcrawler piece here they hit that just as much as the uh, worm no difference I mean as the minnow no difference all right let's get one on that nightcrawler Right, the first one came on the crawler. Right, was here a couple weeks ago with Emily. She got her big jumbo on a crawler. Boom. It just hit, as soon as it hit the bottom, it was there. All right, let's go. 
Oh yeah. Ooh, that's a bit of it. A bigger one. No, he's he's a solid 12 and a half. Real nice one. He hit yeah, this guy came on a little night crawler too. There you go. Let's get some more. Probably gonna be the last one I'm gonna catch. Hope to get a jumbo out here, but oh god, this this thing is that's at least a 12 and a half. At least a 12 and a half. He's gotta be pushing 13. Yeah, about 12, 12 and a half. All right. All right, gonna wrap up the video. I mean, it, it, incredible, incredible day. This is by far the best day of perch fishing I ever had out here on the Chicago Lakefront. You know, you can see we're <laughs> right out off Navy Pier. I mean, fishing the whole Navy Pier area. I mean, these fish always move around. Once you find a pod, you know, sometimes you'll catch three, four, five, six, and then they move and you got to move the boat over, you know, just only 15, 20 feet, and you're back on them again. But these fish are constantly moving out here, but we got a limit of nice fish here. This is probably the smallest one in the box. But but I would say the average size in this box here is probably 12, you know, this is a good solid 12 inch fish here. Right there. Yeah, that thing is just a, yeah, right, right at 12 inches. And that's probably the average size here is 12 inches. And this guy's a little bigger, it's probably a 13. Yeah, a little bit over 13. But uh, just what a great day out here. You know, and once again, the key to making a catch was they were hitting very light. You had to hold the rod. I think this is why, you know, shore fishermen are getting them pretty good, but being in the boat, I, I think is these, when they're biting really light like this is a big plus because I'm fishing right on top of these fish and I'm holding the rod and I don't you don't even see the the tap you, I just feel the slightest bit of resistance and I pull up and, and they're there uh, so once you know once you get that feel down right you dial them in like there uh, it's a great trip here that's Casey sending me a text <laughs> I've been texting him all day telling him how great the fishing is I wish he he was here to enjoy it too but he'll be up here another two weeks we'll be back out and we're gonna catch him then thanks for watching